boy, the music stops and everybody just stops talking. Was that like just shh, quiet, quiet now, right? <laughs> Good morning. We welcome you to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. It's good to worship with you here today. Today we've got a special program that's put on by members of our youth group here. It's called uh, Empty Tomb Clues. And we're going to be looking at and celebrating the fact that Jesus is alive through kind of a detective story here. It's going to be interactive. You may have noticed some things in your pew. If you're sitting there, please don't throw them away, okay? They're part of the service today. and We look forward to being able to walk through that together. Just a quick note about our service. In the past, we've offered communication communion in the pews uh, as we've communed uh, from the front um, and invited you to grab those elements. You can bring those with you in your pews. Uh, Today we're going to be changing that up. We'd like to bring communion back to you. And part of that is just getting back to what communion is all about, to celebrating it as a community and being able to celebrate that meal together as we bring the body and blood of Jesus to you here this morning. And so if you do need communion in your pew where you're seated, I want to invite you uh, to just talk to one of the ushers and let them know so we can come communion during that time of our service today. So with all that being said, would you please stand and would you take a moment and greet those who are around you here this morning. And we worship this morning in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing. Praise cause you're true, 
praise cause there's nobody greater than you i'll praise cause you're sovereign praise cause you reign praise cause you rose and defeated the grave i'll praise cause you're faithful praise cause you're true praise cause there's nobody greater than you Your blood, you 
Detective, and I am a part of the task force for research and understanding of tricks and hijinks, or for short, the Truth Squad. Today, I am in search of a missing person. As you may have heard, Jesus of Nazareth was crucified less than two weeks ago. However, three days after being placed in the tomb, his body was gone, vanished, missing, without a trace. And many people are wondering what happened to his body, as am I. And I believe that there are some key people who can help us understand and discover the truth. Along with them, I will need all of your guys' help. Now, unfortunately, there are some people in power who would do bad things to those who will be sharing their intel with us today need you all to promise to protect those who are sharing their intel today. If you will please do so, raise your right hand and say, we will. we will. Okay, now we may proceed. But how we proceed is the next question. Let me think. Did anyone happen to receive anything today? Like a bag, maybe? Hmm. Did anyone receive a bag? Oh my goodness! Some people receive bags. Can I see what's in it? Hmm, it just looks like a bunch of random puzzle pieces and there's some stickers on the back. I'm not sure how that will help us find Jesus. Hmm, you know, I wonder if our guests left us anything. Hmm. Will you look around and see if there are any clues around you, maybe a paper or envelope? Does anyone have that? If you have one, will you please raise it in the air? Any other ones? We have, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, guys, they left us so many clues. How exciting. So please hold on to them for the time being. When I ask for the number clue that is written on your envelope, please raise your hand or stand up, and someone will bring a microphone to you so that you can share what the clue is that is in the envelope. Now, I'm guessing that on the puzzle pieces go together. So if you received a bag, when a clue is presented, find the matching sticker that is on the back of the puzzle pieces and see if you can put the puzzle together. Okay, I think it's time to start. And I don't know about you, but I always like to start at the beginning, so let's start with clue number one. Right down here, Zach. So what do we have there? Material. Huh, material. A piece of fabric, a cloth. I, I just wonder if someone would be able to help us and give us more information about this clue. I can help you with that. Who are you? My name is Joseph of Arimathea. Nice to meet you. Do you happen to know what this piece of fabric was used for and how it could help us to find Jesus? That is a piece of linen cloth that I used to wrap Jesus' body after he was crucified. But let me give you some background information. Okay. I'm a member of the Jewish leadership and also a disciple of Jesus Christ. Okay. I did not agree with what Jesus' accusers were doing and became fearful with all that was going on. I knew I had to do something, so I asked if I could take his body after he died. Did Pilate agree to give you the body? He did because I'm a respected member of the Jewish council. He was, however, surprised to hear that Jesus was already dead. He had to get confirmation first, but when he did, he granted me the body. I see. Now, once you had the body, what did you do with it? We wrapped it in linen cloth, and I placed it in a tomb nearby that I owned. We rolled the stone and then left. Well, why did you leave? Well, it was the day of preparation, which meant the Sabbath was coming. And on the Sabbath, we have to rest, so we headed home. Okay, got it. 
Now, besides you and your men, was there anyone else there? There were two other women that followed us there, but they left around the time that we did. I see. Well, thank you for your help. Hmm. Now, Joseph said everyone left, but I have a hunch that that might not be true. I wonder if our next clue will help us figure out if anyone else came to the tomb. Where is clue number two? Seal. A seal. Okay. And? A sword. A seal and a sword. Do you know who would carry a sword like this? A soldier, you are so right, but I'm not sure what the seal means. So I think we need to talk to a soldier. Oh good, there we, we found it. We found a soldier. We found this seal, but I'm not sure how it connects to Jesus' missing body. Can you help us? Yes, I was a part of a group of soldiers who secured the tomb. Why did the tomb need to be secured? Well, Jesus said he'd be risen in three days. The chief priests and Pharisees who were against him were worried the disciples would steal the body. So he gathered us to guard the tomb. Fascinating. But wasn't the stone, like, really huge and you would need many strong people to move it? Yes, but our boss didn't want to take any chances. Okay, well, did you and the soldier ever move it? That's the crazy part. There was an earthquake that moved the stone. Was Jesus in there after the earthquake? That's the even crazier part. The tomb was empty. Well, did anyone sneak into the tomb and take the body? Definitely not. There was no time for anyone to carry away the body. That is very interesting. Well, what did you do after you noticed that the body was gone? We went back to the chief priest and told him what we saw. How did they react when you told them? They were freaking out. They, they couldn't believe that Jesus was may, maybe was risen and was in fact the Messiah. So he, they paid us to tell them that the disciples stole it. Oh my goodness, so we have an empty tomb, rumors going around that the body was stolen, and no idea where the body actually went. I think we need another clue. Who has the third clue? Stone. A stone? Let's see. Angel. An angel? Gardening tool. And a, and a gardening tool. Holy cow, that is three clues. Clearly, we are on the right track to finding Jesus' body. Okay, but I wonder who these clues belong to. I see you found my clues. My name is Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. I feel like I've heard that name before. You were there, weren't you? You saw Jesus crucified. Yes, I saw it all. I even saw where they took his body. You were there at the tomb? Yes, I saw a rich man and his helpers collect Jesus' body after he was crucified. Me and the other Mary, the mother of Joseph, followed them to the tomb, where they closed it off with a stone. We then had to leave because the Sabbath was coming, and we had to go prepare ointments and spices. Prepare spices and ointments for what? Well, the day after the Sabbath, we were planning on leaving to go anoint Jesus' body, but it wasn't until the three of us were walking there when we wondered who was going to roll the stone away for us, since there was no way the three of us would be able to do it. Yes, I've heard that it was very heavy and that there would have to be many strong people in order to move it. Yeah, we didn't think about that, but then it didn't even matter. Why is that? Because when we got there, the stone had already been rolled away. Well, was Jesus' body still there? No, that's the crazier part. It was gone. Someone had stolen it, I was sure. So I ran to tell Peter and John about it. How did they react? Well, they needed to see it for themselves. They ran, actually they raced to the tomb. Pretty sure John got there first, but he didn't go in right away. Peter did once he got there, but I'll let him tell you his part of the story. Okay, well, that covers the stone clue that we found, but there's still the angel and the gardening tool. What did those have to do with finding Jesus? I'm so glad you asked. Well, I didn't leave when Peter and John did. I felt so many emotions, so I sat beside the tomb and wept. I couldn't believe that somebody had stolen my friend's body, and I was still grieving. That's understandable. It seems like there are many people who wanted him dead, so I'm not surprised that someone would do something like that. And despite what the soldier said, I, about there being no way that someone could have taken the body, it sure seems like that is what happened. Yeah, that's what I thought at first, too, but that's not the end of what I saw. What do you mean? Well, I looked into the tomb, and I saw two angels sitting where Jesus' body had been. Angels? 
the clue. The, what did the angel say? They asked me why I was weeping, and I told them it was because someone had taken away my Lord, and I didn't know where they had took him. Well, did they tell you where Jesus' body went? How does a gardening tool fit in with all of this? Were the angels gardeners? Oh my gosh, patience. I'm getting to that part. Well, after I said this to the angels, and I turned, and I saw a man. I thought he was the gardener. He asked me why I was weeping and who I was seeking. Ah, the gardening tool. Okay, it's starting to make a little sense. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you tell him? Well, I thought that maybe he was the one that had stolen the body. So I said to him, Sir, if you have taken him away, lead me to him so that I can take him away. Well, was he the one who took the body? What did he say? You'll never believe what he said to me. Are, are you going to tell me I'm kind of like sitting on the edge of my seat? <laughs> he said, Mary. He said, all he, that's all he said. He said, your name? Yes, that, but that's all he needed to say. He knew me. My eyes saw him. It was Jesus. He wasn't dead, and his body hadn't been stolen. He had risen from the dead. Are you sure, like, absolutely, positively sure that it was Jesus? Yes, I've never been more sure of anything else in my life. All I could say was Rabboni. Teacher. That means teacher. Correct. Well, did he say anything else to you? He told me that he had not yet ascended to the Father, but would be, so I was to go and tell his brothers this. And that's what I did. I went and found them and told them that I had seen the Lord and told them what he had told me to say. Did they believe you? No, it seemed that they thought it was just a tale. Interesting. I hope I'm able to ask them about that. Maybe a clue will lead us to them. Has anyone seen the fourth clue? Over there and over there. Hmm. map and a map and bread and bread hmm i wonder where the route on the map is going is it showing us where jesus is like x marks the spot not quite oh uh, you startled me who are you my name is cleopas i'm one of many jesus many disciples i see what did you say what do you mean when you said not quite you asked if jesus was on the x on the map i did so if he isn't where the X is, then what is the significance of the map? The map shows our route to Emmaus. Why were you going to Emmaus? Well, me and Jesus' other disciples were going there to stay there. And my not quite wasn't about what hap why we were going to Emmaus. It was about what happened on the way there and what happened when we got there. Okay, so what happened on the way? Well, we were walking and talking about all the things that just happened with Jesus' crucifixion and the empty tomb when a man started walking near us. Was he following you? I'm not quite sure, but when he asked us what we were talking about, and we, and we, we were taken by surprise because it was an emotional subject, and everyone knew what would happen, even visitors. But he had no idea? No, when, we asked what, when he asked what happened, he said, what things? Now, okay, now that's intriguing. So what did you tell him? We told him everything about Jesus of Nazareth, who was sent to die for our sins, by, and some of our own religious leaders were the, responsible for the sentencing of the, and crucifixion, and how some of the women from our group went to go see his tomb, but it was empty. That's a lot to take in. How, how did he respond to all of that? He called us foolish, but not in a mean way, more in a you're not seeing the whole picture kind of way. He talked about how wasn't it necessary that Jesus died to save us from our suffering. Okay, wow. That is not what I expected. I would have been speechless. We were. He started interpreting scriptures going all the way back to Moses. Well, who is this man, and how does the bread clue fit in with all of this? Well, we weren't quite sure who the man was, but I'm, and I'm getting to that bread part. But we were getting close to where we were staying in Emmaus, and we asked him if he wanted to join us. And we sat at the table, and he broke bled, bread and blessed it. The bread! That was the clue! Yeah, and you'll never guess who the man was. Who? Jesus. Our eyes were opened when he broke the bread. We can't believe we didn't recognize him sooner. Jesus had risen. Yeah, but as soon as we realized it was, it was him... He vanished. 
So, you know you're not the only one who didn't recognize Jesus right away. Mary Magdalene thought a gardener was speaking to her by the tomb until he spoke her name, and then she saw it was him. So, what did you do after he disappeared? Uh, we, we turned and we went back to Jerusalem. We practically ran. We, we met up with other Jesus' disciples, and we told them about all the things that had happened and how our friend had risen indeed and how, when, how we didn't recognize him until we broke the bread and what happened on the road there. Oh, man, I feel like we are getting so close to locating Jesus. Thank you for your clues. You're welcome. I still feel like I have some questions for his disciples, his inner circle, his closest friends. I really hope that there is another clue that will lead us to them. Where is clue number five? Folded material. Okay. Three. And number three. Hmm. I see you found my clue. Are you one of Jesus' disciples? I am. My name is Peter. Finally, I have been hoping that I would get to talk with one of you, but I'm a little confused. Your clues look an awful lot like our first one from Joseph, and I don't even know where to begin with the number. You all write about it being similar to Joseph's, as it was something that Joseph put on Jesus' body. It was the cloth that covered his face. Now, I don't mean to dismiss your clue, but we've already heard about Jesus being wrapped in linens and put in the tomb. Yes, but you haven't heard my part of it. Okay, let's hear it. Have you ever done something you shouldn't have and then regretted it? Of course, I mean, who hasn't? Exactly. I am guilty of this as well, and Jesus knew what I was going to do before I did it. What do you mean, he knew? He told me I was going to deny him three times before the rooster crowed. I didn't believe him. None of us did. I loved him, and I had, and I had just told him that I would lay down my life for him when he told me I would deny him. So, did you deny knowing him? Three times during Jesus' trials, three different people recognized me and said, hey, aren't you one of Jesus' friends? Each, you have to understand, we were all so scared, so I feared for my life. And so each time I said, no, I do not know him. It wasn't until the rooster crowed that I realized what I had done. He knew. You're telling me that Jesus knew what you were going to do before you did it, and he still chose you to be one of his own? It's kind of hard for us to comprehend, but it just shows how much he loves us. He knows we're going to do wrong things and accepts that and loves us unconditionally. Wow. Well, what can we do then when we make a mistake or do the wrong thing? He wants us to confess our sins, ask for forgiveness, and accept the forgiveness that he offers. I'm not sure I know how to do that. Well, you're in luck, because we've got a lot of people here who could help us. Excuse me, sir, could you help us with this part? <laughs> Absolutely. It's more like God who can help us with this part, because he tells us in his word, whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will receive mercy. And you know, as Peter here tells us, there's a lot of reason to conceal our sin from sin, from sin or shame and guilt and all the things that come in between of that. And so we take time this morning, no matter what those sins might be, to go to our God confessing those sins and receiving his mercy using the words on our screen. Merciful God, I am truly sorry for my sins. For the sake of Jesus Christ, please forgive me. Remove the guilt of my sin and wash me that I may be whole again. Help me to be faithful today tomorrow, and each day, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Mercy. Mercy is the whole reason that God sent his Son into this world, and mercy is what you receive today because of that amazing gift. And it's because of that amazing gift, it's with joy I share to you, all your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I'm starting to get it. That's great. I see why you left the number three, but what about the face cloth? 
Ah, uh, yes, that leads us to after Jesus was crucified. Uh, uh, we were waiting, me and John were in our homes when Mary told us about Jesus' body missing. We wanted to see for ourselves, so we raced to the tomb. Ah, uh, I've heard about this part. <laughs> Who was it? Was it John? What did he say? Actually, it was Mary, and she did say that John beat you to the tomb. She said that? Well, I guess he did technically beat me to the tomb. I let him. I think we may be getting a little off track. So what did you see when you got to the tomb? The same thing Mary had seen, an empty tomb with no body and a pile of linens on the floor. However, I noticed something else. Was it the face cloth? Sure was. So what's so special about a face cloth? It wasn't just about the face cloth, but how I found the face cloth. Well, how did you find the face cloth? Unlike the rest of the linens, which were just lying there, this one was folded. And that's significant? If it was, it would have been laying with the other cloths. OK, I, I suppose. So what does it mean? To understand, I need to give you a little background knowledge about, about an old Hebrew tradition with a servant and a master. The servant would not be seen during the meal, so in order to know when he could come out, he would look at the napkin. When the master was done, he would throw his napkin on, on the table, but if he was coming back, he would fold it. So you're saying that Jesus was saying he was going to come back. That's exactly what he was saying. Wow, so what did you do when you figured this out? We went back to our home since we didn't know when Jesus was coming back. I kind of thought we'd have to wait for a little while, but he ended up coming that night. You're joking, that fast? It was crazy. We were all inside except for Thomas, who was gone. We had locked the doors. We were still scared Jesus' accusers would come for us. But then we heard peace to you. We thought we were, see we were startled and frightened and thought we were seeing a spirit. It wasn't until it spoke a second time that we realized what it was. It, he said, touch my hands and feet. Touch me. It was Jesus. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Jesus is risen. And you all got to see him in the flesh. All except for Thomas. Oh, right. You said he wasn't there. But the crazy thing is, when we told him about what we had seen, he didn't believe us. He didn't? Nope. But I'll let him tell you about his doubts. I believe we have one more clue. We do. Does anyone else have a clue? Nails. Nails. Hand. And a hand. Our last clues. Oh, okay. Hmm. I've just been informed that Thomas is unable to be here today in person, so my colleague will be interviewing him from a remote location. I guess that's my cue. Peter was just telling us about you. You weren't there when Jesus appeared to the other disciples, is that correct? Yes, what he told you is true. He also told us that you had doubts. Unfortunately, that was also true. I just couldn't believe that Jesus had risen and they had seen him. You know, everything that had happened was so traumatic. We thought Jesus was the one and then he was brutally murdered. My heart was broken. I just didn't have it in me to believe again. So yes, I said I needed proof. Honestly, wouldn't you? I told them that I needed to feel the marks on his hands, the mark of the nails, and put my hand on his side. Those are your clues, the hands and the nails. Did you get your proof? Yes, eight days later, me and my friends were, hang were together when Jesus appeared and said, peace be with you. I was so shocked. He told me to see his hands, touch the mark of the nails, and put my hand on his side. He told me not to not disbelieve, but to believe. 
Immediately I knew it was him. I said, my Lord and my God. What did Jesus say back? He met me where I was at. He allowed me to see the things I needed to see in order to have faith again. And then he said, blessed are those who have not seen and still believed. It's really hard to do that, to believe in something that we cannot see. I mean, I'm a detective. I go by facts and evidence. But Jesus calls us to believe in him without seeing him. True faith is believing in God based on evidence without total proof, believing without seeing. Exactly. I learned Jesus is just as present in faith as he is in person. He knew not everyone would have the chance that I had to see him in the flesh. And yet those who believe and have not seen still get the same reward in faith. And sometimes we do doubt. I mean, we're only human. But today I also learned that Jesus forgives us for our sins just because he loves us. You guys, our puzzle looks almost complete. Let's put the last three puzzle pieces together and see what we get. Hmm, to me it just looks like a bunch of random stickers still. I wonder if it isn't what is seen, but what is unseen. What would happen if we flipped the puzzle over? What does it say? Jesus lives. Oh my goodness, guys, we did it. We followed the clues, asked the questions, heard the witnesses, and now we know the truth. Jesus died on that terrible day, but that wasn't the end, because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And Christ still lives in our lives today. And that's one of the truths that we get to celebrate in our worship, especially as we continue in the Lord's Supper, that the living Christ comes to us where we are to bring us his body and blood, the same living Christ who gave us these words on the night of his betrayal when he took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And if you are helping serve communion this morning, I'd invite you to come forward. And if you are in your pews here, I want to invite you to fill out those connect cards that are in your pews. There are prayer requests there, things that you can uh, put down for us to pray about for you. We'd love to be able to do that. You can hand that to the ushers as you make your way forward to the Lord's Supper as we gather together and celebrate the truth that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The 
Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his joy and in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gift, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, to strengthen us and encourage us to forgive us and renew us. And Lord, may that strength, may that encouragement, that renewal guide us as we go into our lives to be living witnesses of your life here through Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. We have a couple of announcements for you here this morning. First off, we want to invite you to come back next week. Uh, We're beginning our series called Shattered, and that is about finding hope when life hurts. You know, as we talk about the hope of Easter, uh, it doesn't just end on Easter Sunday or today. It continues on into our lives, but also so does the reality of living in a broken world. And so what we want to do over the next six weeks, starting next week, is try to find those moments of hope as we live into this life, as we live in this world. So we want to invite you to come back and be a part of that as we walk through that series together. Uh, We also have an offering for you, so if you have one, please leave it in the baskets on the way out of worship. And at the end of worship today, we'll have members of our prayer team who will be in the front as well in the back. If you want something to be prayed over, something you want prayed about, sadness, sorrow, joys, whatever it might be, everything in between, they are here to pray with you and for you. So please take advantage of that after our worship today. 
Receive the blessing of our Lord as you get ready for the rest of your week, knowing that Jesus is alive and that changes everything. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let's sing. Would you join me in thanking our youth for our worship here today? Thank you very much. Now go in peace and serve the Lord.
Thanks be to God.